Hey everybody, Vivian here with my second to last post as a guest designer for Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft. I've so enjoyed this opportunity with Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft and I'm really sad to see it end. But since it is my second to last post, I thought I'd share something with you just a little bit more personal and a little bit more abstract. I hope you'll be kind. Originally, I was planning on it being a layout uh, based on this photograph but it ended up becoming sort of a, a painting instead. <laughs> and I'm, I'm kind of excited about it, but I am delving into new territory for me, um, a little bit more abstract than what I'm used to. And I'm a little bit nervous about sharing it with you, but I do have some techniques, so I hope you get something out of it. So isn't this photograph amazing? This is a bud on a tree that's growing in our backyard. And this is how the leaves pop out of the buds and the leaves on the tree. And to me, it looks like this fantastical moth. Uh, and it's got these beautiful bulbous shapes that are really tightly packed. And um, I have some other reference photos that I'll show you in a little bit. But those open up into these beautiful soft tendrils with all this pollen on the tips of all the fuzzy tendrils. Um, it's really amazing to see nature up close and personal to me. To me. And um, being that uh, Earth Day is coming up, it sort of coincides with basically all the projects I share with you because they are all inspired by nature pretty much. So here are the reference photos. And I've also, I, I took that photo of a bleeding heart that I planted in the very shady nook. Um, I'm out in the garden every free second I get these days. So it makes sense that my projects are all inspired by what's going on out there. So we are going to make some pastes. And um, the great thing about being able to make pastes with gelatos is you can really customize them. Like if you want a particular shade of red, you can mix a couple different ones to make a very loose, well, what I'm gonna end up making is a, is a liquid a very loose liquid that we can drizzle and do fun stuff with. But I'm going to start out with a paste. The yellow I'm going to do straight as is. So I'm going to use the lemon gelato to create my yellow. And I'm going to make uh, three jars of pigment in primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. I think those are really great. If you're starting out with any medium, those are the colors to get because from those three colors, you can create all the other colors in the spectrum. And if you're on a budget, I think it's it's a, a wise thing to do. And if you shy away from color, using, I swear to you, using Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft products has brought so much color into my craft. Everything that I have made with my Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft products, pro products have just been bursting with color. So that's just been really, really exciting. So as you can see, I chopped up all my pigment into tiny pieces. I misted some water on there and I mashed it up a little bit more to make a paste that's easily transferable to a little container like this. And um, just scoop it on in there. And um, then you can dilute that with a little bit of water to make a, a nice bright pigment. I didn't want to waste anything. So um, I just spritzed some more water onto the card because there was some pigment left on the card. And I took some um, bubble wrap, which I used in a previous project that I shared on my channel on YouTube. Um, and I just rubbed the bubble wrap all in there and placed that bubble wrap on top of my, can my watercolor paper. So I was very careful not to move the bubble wrap once I placed it on top of my watercolor paper because I want to maintain that pattern, that repetitive pattern of honeycomb shapes that you can create using simple household product, bubble wrap. So I'm just um, weighting it down to make sure I get a lot of contact between the bubble wrap, which has the pigment on it, and my watercolor paper. And I also used a, a very high quality watercolor paper too because um, I know I'm going to be using a lot of pigment on it and a lot of very wet pigment. And I just set that aside to dry. 
So I made a customized blue with blueberry and cotton candy gelatos using the exact same, exact same method that I showed you before with the yellow. And I made a red toned paste out of red cherry and another lighter pink. It wasn't labeled, but I think it was a guava. So this, this is dry and I just love, love that effect. Uh, it makes me really happy. And it's a great way to use something that you would probably throw away. So I also used some um, plastic wrap in one of my recent videos. Um, I took the leftover blue that was left on my craft mat and on the card and made a really, really dilute, dilute um, pigment and poured it on top of my plastic wrap and then place that on top of my paper also. I'm going from very light to dark, and that way I don't feel too nervous about any um, changes I make or additions that, or modifications I make to my painting. And then you're gonna set that aside to dry as well. So I mixed my primary colored paste with just enough water to create a liquid but not a very dilute liquid. The pigment is pretty intense and you can see how much is in there. And I just pour it down on there. And I think one of my first videos for Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft, I showed some pouring and blowing. Um, so this method, you really sort of just have to go with it and whatever happens, was meant to be. And I really love working that way. Uh, and creating these splatters always creates a really, really natural feeling in your work. So I really like using them. So I just, I started with the yellow because I like to start light. And then I started to go in with the rest of my primaries, the blue that I customized and the red that I customized. You can see it's really thick. Um, and you can just put, you could go in there with your finger and start moving that around on the page. You can mist it to get it a little bit more dilute. You can pour water on there and start blowing some more. Really is, this is time to play. And what I love about working this way is that your primaries mix. So we have a purple now and we have a green now, and it all happened in a really organic, spontaneous way. Um, now, right now, it looks like a mess, maybe. Um, I, I find it pretty cool. Um, and, oh, <laughs> I spilled my blue. So I started to freak out, and then I was like, you know what, let me just go with it. And um, I took that very thick blue and started splattering it on the, the page. And what was also very interesting about this, um, this mixture is that there were still little bits of tiny grains of pigment, but really concentrated pigment in what I poured onto the page. So you can see when the water hits those areas of more concentrated pigment, it just creates, the, the painting starts to live and do its own thing. The thing you want to be careful about is not mixing too much because if you mix all of those three colors together too much, you get a really muddy, muddy painting. So I think once you start to see the two combine into a secondary color, that's when you should step away and say that that's good enough. So I decided to add a significantly larger amount of my customized red in there and then start creating some circular shapes with my fingertips. Um, like I said, I was inspired by those bulbous, tightly packed shapes in the leaves that were bursting out of those shells. 
Um, so I'm starting to create those shapes again in a really abstract reinterpretation, sort of deconstructing the entire, de deconstructing the shot that I showed you at the very beginning. The techniques I'm sharing with you today are very much inspired by my work with watercolor. Um, I took a watercolor class at um, Otis College of Art and Design through their adult community program. And my teacher introduced me to the work of a Chinese painter, Lian Quan Zhen. And I believe he has videos uh, accessible through the Artist Network. Amazing, amazing work this guy does. And exactly in line with the way I aspire to work, which is really spontaneous instead of just going with your medium. So that's with watercolor. Gelatos are a little bit different. And creating this uh, liquid medium here, you get a lot of graininess, uh, which is actually really exciting with the effects that I like to go for in my work, which is very natural, very organic, somewhat, somewhat grotesque. And... Um, keeping some of that graininess, which is the tiny, tiny pieces of pigment in there, helped me create those effects. And um, here I'm just, if you see the, the shapes and patterns in those leaves that are starting to unfurl, I'm starting to try to create that feeling in a really abstract way in this sort of deconstructed painting. And I'm also going with the flow here again taking my finger and pressing down really hard, especially where I see the um, little tiny grains of pigment still in their solid form, because this way I'm able to start creating more intense, intensely hued areas to show the outline of those circular shapes in my deconstructed bulbous forms from the reference photo. When it's still wet like this, you can actually go in and lighten things up pretty easily. I just went in with a paper towel wrapped around my finger and wiped away some areas to create highlights. Uh, in general, I'm thinking my, my light source is coming from the top right corner um, so the top right corners of these bulbous shapes, I'm wiping away the pigment in those areas. And because blue is my, my, my shadow, that's going to help me create my shadows, I'm going in on the underside of those circular shapes um, to create some dark shadows. I'm just going in and finger painting basically. So this is what it looks like so far. It's still pretty light. We're going to go in and darken things up and create some more distinct shapes. But I can't speak highly enough about the value of bubble wrap. Um, if you didn't do anything else, I think, that I share with you here today, I think just using the bubble wrap is a great way to add fast, easy interest and texture to your layouts or whatever projects you're working on. I've used bubble wraps, bubble wrap with watercolors. I'm using it today with gelatos. Um, you can also use it with acrylic paint and it becomes like um, a free stamp, free background texture stamp. So this is where I started to incorporate the use of my Stamper's Big Brush Pens to start carving out those bulbous shapes um, by really looking at what's there on the page, what happened from that mess that we created, um, and trying to sort of see or imagine where those bulbous shapes are. And um, every area that has some highlights as you can see here. So that's that's going to be part of another bulb. Um, and the great thing about these Stamper's Big Brush Pins is that they are permanent once they're dry. 
Once they're wet, you can actually sort of tease out color and blend a little bit using a water brush pen, which I, I did in this project. Um, but they are permanent, and I want to clearly mark out these shapes and then go in with my watercolor pencils and um, add in some shading, but make sure that I'm able to keep those lines intact. So these Stamper's Big Brush pens are great for that. They've got a really fine tip at the end and you can press down harder or use the side to create a thicker line. So where there are purples, I'm using Stamper's Big Brush pens in purple shades. Where there are blues, I'm using Stamper's Big Brush pens in the ver whole variety of blue shades that they've got. And when they're in the red area of the spectrum, I'm using reds and pinks, and so on and so forth. So now that all my shapes are carved out with my uh, Stamper's Big Brush pens, I've got those permanent India ink shapes, I'm going in now with the Art Grip Aquarelle pencils from Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft to uh, darken my shadows and make those shapes really pop out. Um, so with the same idea, I'm trying to maintain the same colors in different areas of my painting. And this is a bluish area, so I'm using the blue. The great thing about these watercolor pencils, as opposed to straight watercolors, is that you do have that extra level of control. Um, you can put your pigment exactly where you want it. And as you can see here, um, with my water brush that you can also get from Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft. I can draw out the color into different areas. So the blue of the shadows, I can actually bring into those green bulbous shapes to create some lighter shadows within the shapes as well. And by doing this, it actually ends up bringing a sense of unity to the whole painting and bringing a feeling of connection between every element in the painting. So even if you were to go with a really realistic um, choice in your, in your painting, like let's say a portrait, you could use primary colors to create that portrait. Um, and it actually works. I've seen this done with primary colors and landscape paintings and wet as well. And it's amazing. These colors are not at all like what you see in the colors of, of your photo, reference photograph or if you're out in nature painting, but it works and it creates a real feeling of a luminous feeling in, in your work. It's really liberating as well to be able to look at your um, subject, whether it's a portrait or a landscape or something macro like this, you know, my nature shot of the leaves. Look at your photograph and then just put it away and trust that, you know, the inspiration from your, your reference photo, in this case it was my reference photo, the inspiration is there and just create something else. Something different, something unique, something that's uniquely you. I wanted to share with you one of my favorite quotes that I actually got exposed to through my watercolor teacher um, at the Otis School of Art and Design. Uh, she introduced me to an artist named Frank Webb. I think he's primarily a watercolor artist um, and writes beautifully about art. Anyway, the quote is about sincerity in your work and it's sincerity exacts a cost. It means being you in spite of trends. It is the only way you will eventually be separated from those who run with the pack. So as your craft evolves, uh, I hope these will be words that resonate for you as well. They definitely resonate for me and they're words I try to live by as my craft grows and develops. So here I'm using um, the watercolor pencil to create all my shadows within the shapes and around the shapes. 
and just drawing that color around in a really controlled way. Whereas with just regular watercolors, you usually have to have a lot more skill to be able to have that type of control. And um, one thing I found working on this project is that uh, when you have a wet surface, the watercolor pencils go on a lot more thickly and uh, the pigment is a lot more intense. So if you're going for uh, more pigment, I'd suggest that you wet your surface first. As I was working in some more intense areas of, of red shades in this area, I discovered some little squiggles that were happening in the wet surface using the watercolor pencil. And I liked it, I went with it, and I started creating that little extra dose of texture with those squiggly marks all over those shapes. And it ended up creating something of a vascularity, which I'm very interested in. Um, I oftentimes create that with my hot glue effects, but um, I was really excited because this was another way to create a vascular effects, just using watercolor on watercolor pencils, the Aquarelle Art Grip pencils from Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft on a wet surface. So I've got some stills to share with you. This is a close-up of the really easy texture you can create using your bubble wrap and media. Here's a close-up of how all of those colors mix together in fun, neat ways in the graininess. Here's some of that vascularity on our shapes and some more vascularity. And here's the final painting, a lot of white space. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Um, I had a lot of fun preparing it for you guys and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you'd like any more inspirations, please come visit me at my blog. That's www.contadinak.com. And I have plenty other videos on my station. That's Contadina K. And I'll see you shortly in just a couple more days at Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft for my last post with them as a guest designer.